Now, when we start to look at how people age, you know, in our society, we have an epidemic of neurodegenerative conditions, cognitive decline, um, Alzheimer's disease is on the rise. And so what is what is actually happening in, in these individuals' brains as they're aging compared to somebody that's aging successfully, right? That's aging well. Um, what, what is the difference? What's actually happening there? Yeah, what we see in people with neurodegenerative disease, such as Alzheimer's disease or Parkinson's disease or various different types of dementia, is that typically is typified by the buildup of these neurofibrillary tangles or tau proteins, or we'll call it tauopathies, where you have these protein aggregates that start to build up. Now, these protein build up, these misfolded proteins that build up in the brain, they're not in and of itself a problem because that's a normal process of your brain trying to, you know, wall off something or get rid of something that it doesn't want. So it's and essentially kind of like inflammation, right? Inflammation is yeah. not good or bad, right? We kind of say inflammation is the cause of all disease. No, inflammation is not the cause of all disease. Chronic inflammation is the cause of all mm. disease. Inflammation is just something that our body naturally has as a way to help us to fight off infections. So these misfilled proteins in our brain are a natural process of your brain trying to maintain itself. But when you have excess amount of these misfold protein buildup, then that can start to impair circulation or neuroplasticity, uh, synaptic transmissions. And then we start to get these neurodegenerative issues. Now, the question is, what, what will cause these misfold protein to even show up in the first place? Well, a big driver is, as we talked about earlier, these fuel delivery problems, right? When you have fuel delivery problems, what happens is your mitochondria cannot produce energy efficiently. And mitochondria have within themselves these mitochondrial quality control mechanisms, right? Through mitophagy and uh, through uh, mitogenesis or mitochondrial biogenesis. So uh, mitochondria has a way to maintain it, its own function because mitochondria DNA doesn't have the capacity to repair itself like regular cellular DNA does. So it does these processes to, to help maintain itself. And when you don't have proper energy production due to fuel delivery problems, mitochondrial functions start to degrade. And with that, it comes with decreased energy production, but also increased oxidative stress. And oxidative stress causes, you know, uh, uh, this this damage that happens that's part of aging. In fact, the reason we age is because we're oxygen breathing animals, right? By aerobic respiration, the fact that we burn oxygen for energy, what comes out of that as a byproduct is oxidative stress, is oxidation. So it's normal, but it builds up over time. And that oxidative stress basically causes our cells to age over time. This is why we age. And this is why you know, eventually everything shuts down and this is why eventually we all die, right? There's nobody that escapes this. Uh, only one person did. Uh, but other than that, in history, uh, nobody else has. Uh, so the, the, the a fuel delivery problem can cause this mitochondria issue, which leads to that. And then secondly, inflammation itself is also another thing that's typified in people with neurodegenerative disease because the inflammation can also cause mitochondria problems. So in essence, if you can't make energy, your brain cells are going to suffer because your brain is very sensitive to energy demand. And then also, if you're inflamed, your brain cells doesn't work very well because these brain cells can degenerate faster in the presence of a energy deficit or inflammation, which causes microglial activation, which causes this widespread brain degeneration. Yeah, it's powerful stuff right there. You know, you, you talked about oxygen. You talked about uh, blood sugar stability. How does that play a role in neurodegenerative conditions? Let's start with blood sugar. Uh, it's very well known that if you have blood sugar issues such as insulin resistance, and and the result of that, you may have higher levels of hemoglobin A1C, which is a blood test marker that indicates this glycation damage from higher blood sugar. Basically, when you have high blood sugar, the 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 sugar molecule causes this damage to your cells. And that damage can be measured through hemoglobin A1C. Research has shown very conclusively that high hemoglobin A1C is associated with an increased risk for Alzheimer's disease. And the number that we like to see is, you know, below 5.55 you know, or below to, to begin with, but even lower numbers like 5.2 or 5.1 or even 5.0 
maybe even more optimal. So th that's where the blood sugar issue can relate to neurodegenerative disease, simply through the mechanism of insulin resistance and this advanced glycation end product. Mm. Uh, on the oxygen side, if you have oxygen issues, this can show up. I mean, one way to show up is people with um, dementia that's of the uh, ischemic type, right? Ischemic dementia. So what that means is they have lack of, uh, they have mini strokes in the past, little blood vessels that pop off. And so they don't deliver blood to brain tissue anymore. And these things develop over time. And so that brain cells get starved of blood flow, therefore oxygen. And that's a mechanism of people developing dementia as a result. Uh, now, lack of oxygen in and of itself is inflammatory. When cells undergo hypoxia or low oxygen states, it triggers off this inflammatory cascade and basically you get inflammation directly from a hypoxic state. So chronic hypoxia is very damaging to the brain. And we already know that, you know, most people know that if you go without oxygen for five minutes, your brain cells, you know, they, they're, they're gone, they're, they're dead, and you don't get those back. This is why if you drown or you don't have oxygen for five minutes, that's it, it's irre irreversible. So that just tells you how sensitive your brain is to oxygen deprivation. Even at mild, low-grade, low oxygen states, chronically, that can still be an issue.